Hello there, peoples of the internet. TigerJ15 here, and welcome to Game Over, the internet series in which our theories are so good that people actually use them to debunk death battle. Thanks for that, by the way, guys. Really made my day. Our question today is, how hot or how cold can Grey and Natsu become? Uh, Grey and Natsu both being characters from the very popular series Fairy Tale. Now, you're probably saying that we can't measure how far they can go because it's magic, which isn't scientific and therefore has too many variables. <coughs> Their magic still has physical properties, so therefore we can still measure it given the physical boundaries of the universe. Take that one, Hogwarts. So let's start off with Natsu then. Fire. It's hot. That's it, game over. Okay, so fire can come in different colors, and the lighter the color is, the hotter the fire is. So, while just visible red is the coolest at 525 degrees Celsius, depending on the type of fire that it actually is, it can be hotter or cooler. For example, there are several types of red fire, from just visible red fire to cherry with clear being at 1000 degrees Celsius. Orange fire continues further with deep orange at 1100 degrees Celsius to clear orange at 1200 degrees Celsius. While blue flames can go up to as much as 1300 degrees Celsius. And then finally we come to white fire. Whitish fire is at 1300 degrees Celsius and the highest it can go to is Dazzling White Fire at 1,500 degrees Celsius. That's a lot of numbers. So, that's the extent of fire. Though, there is one more thing up Natsu's non-existent sleeves. And that would be that after absorbing the flames of Dark Regulus, Natsu was able to combine his own flames with that of Dark Regulus's to create devastating black fire attacks. So, you might currently be asking me, how hard is black fire? Is it any harder than white fire? No. In fact, it's not even scientifically possible to do. You see, color is a very important part of the electromagnetic spectrum, especially when it comes to what our eyes can see in, which would be visible light. The visible light can be split into many colors. White is the color that contains all of the colors in the spectrum, whereas black is a color that absorbs all light and the colors. Thus, it's kind of impossible for fire to do that since, you know, fire is a source of light, and since black absorbs light, it's kind of impossible to be two things at once. Unless, of course, it's dark blue fire which is used, in which case we've already discussed it. Sorry, I guess Natsu won't be firing Starfire's sister anytime soon. However, that's not it. That's not all Natsu has up his non-existent sleeves. I figured that this would be the extent of Natsu's abilities, but I was so wrong. The original question was, how hot can Natsu get? And how... Cold King Grey get, but we're not onto him yet. And I believe I have the answer to this question. I mean, when I said how hot can he get, I didn't necessarily mean with fire. I'm talking about something that's so fast that when it actually hits something, it creates massive amounts of shockwaves. Something so hot that it's almost five times hotter than the surface of the sun itself. I'm talking about lightning. You see, after eating Laxus Dreyar's lightning and having the flames and lightning inside his body fused together, Natsu gained the ability to use his fire dragon slayer magic in hearts with lightning. So, lightning is our current maximum, and like I said, lightning is almost five times hotter than the surface of the sun. So, the sun is 5778 Kelvin, or 5,504.85 degrees Celsius. Lightning, on the other hand, can reach up to temperatures of 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
or about 29,982.222 degrees Celsius. So this kind of takes the saying, I'm all fired up, to a whole new meaning. So there you go. That's the maximum heat that Natsu can produce with his abilities. Now, there are those of you that actually watch the anime that are currently reminding me of Natsu's Dragon Force. In which case, you are correct. That does enhance Natsu's already superhuman abilities. That doesn't, however, mean that it will turn up the heat with his fire and lightning abilities. Dragon Force greatly increases the damage done by standard Dragon Slayer spells and grants the user access to more advanced and powerful attacks. Just because it increases his attack power doesn't mean that it will increase the attack's heat. So, that's it for Natsu. But what about Grey? Well, that's a longer story. Let's start with Grey's ice abilities. Ice in itself, on average, is, well, zero degrees Celsius. Though, really, solid ice can be around minus 17 degrees Celsius. But, that's not as far as we can take it. We can go so much further. For example, I want you to take a look at this scene from the anime. You see, this is magic called Ice Make, a form of molding magic that allows the user to create ice at his will and to shape it into objects. In Gray's case, he uses static ice make, meaning that he can shape his ice into inanimate things or weapons. Now, given this scene, you see the vapor that is coming from his hands? This is called sublimination, when ice converts directly into vapor without going through the liquid phase, meaning that the ice is in fact being made out of thin air. And I don't mean from nothing, it is physically being made from the molecules of the air. How do I know this? Well, in order to explain, we're going to have to get physical. No, not that type of physical. I mean, we're going to have to go over a few simple rules of physics. Rule number one. Matter can't be created or destroyed. It, however, can be converted into different types of matter. The example being water to ice. Rule number two. Two matters containing mass cannot occupy in the same space and time. What do I mean by this? Well, since the universe operates with these laws in mind, then that means that Grey isn't creating the matter, but is simply making the ice out of thin air. Literally, he is taking the gases in the air and is turning them into a solid. You see, assuming that they have the same atmosphere of Earth, then that means that the atmosphere is in fact made up of 78.09% nitrogen and 20.95% oxygen. The remaining 1% is made up of argon at 0.93%, carbon dioxide at 0.039%, and 0.003% of other trace gases. Using this, we can easily figure out how cold grey can get, due to each element's freezing point. Solid oxygen has a temperature of minus 218.79 degrees Celsius. Solid nitrogen has a temperature of minus 210 degrees Celsius. Solid argon has a temperature of minus 193.15 degrees Celsius. Now, theoretically, since grey is freezing the particles in that air, then it's theoretically possible for him to make solid hydrogen, which has the temperature of 14.01 Kelvin, or minus 259.14 degrees Celsius. This gives a whole new meaning to the phrase cold as ice. Get it? Because he deals with ice? I'm just going to shut up and get back to the science. Is this as low as Grey can go, though? Possibly not. However, instead of just guessing, let's just stop and state that he can't go any lower than zero Kelvin. 
which is also known as absolute zero. Why? Because absolute zero is the lowest possible temperature to achieve in the universe, when nothing could be colder and no heat energy remains in a substance. Absolute zero is the point at which the fundamental particles of nature have minimal vibration motion, retaining only quantum mechanical zero-point energy included particle motion. At absolute zero, or minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, basically atoms physically stop moving at this temperature. So, whether Gray is able to use magic or not, it's still physically impossible for him to go any lower. I mean, yes, both Gray and Natsu use magic, but they still have to abide by the physical laws of the universe. Sorry lads, not even Harry Potter can help you out with this thing. So, jokes aside, this is how far the fairy tale train can go, with Natsu being almost five times hotter than the surface of the sun, and Grey being able to possibly go to the lowest temperature in the universe. These guys really are the definition of fire and ice. So it seems that being a mage really does have its perks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go see what happens if you combine Natsu with the Dragonborn. Thanks for watching.